Hello there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Adam Gifford. I am a budget composer and today we're going to be talking about three advantages you have for being a composer with no money. So you want to be a composer. You've been watching YouTube tutorials, listening to podcasts, reading blog articles, anything you can do to get into that world. You want to do some kind of incredible music for film, television, video games, podcasts, whatever it is you like. But in your mind, the only thing between you and becoming the next Hans Zimmer is money. It's an old cycle where you think that you need money to be able to buy things to improve your gear, whether it's software, hardware, and when you do that, you'll be able to get more gigs, produce better music. But the best way for you to get all of these things is to have a gig. Some film or something that's going to pay you so you'll be able to afford these things. And then you're right back at square one that you don't have any work. And why? It's because I don't have the right gear. It's this cycle that you have to break. It's this cycle that you have to realize it's all in your head. Once you get out of that, you start to realize what the advantages actually are to not having a lot of money. Sure, one day you might look back at this time and think, yeah, I'm able to produce much higher quality music because of what I've been able to do. But right now, when you're starting out, you don't need all of that. Gear is just an effective tool to be able to get you to do things quicker. Efficiency is what you are paying for. That being said, that does mean that there are a lot of challenges with being a composer on a budget. But today I want to talk to you about three advantages that I think you have over the people who have a lot of money and a lot of the gear. Advantage number one, studio space. So if you don't have a lot of money for gear, I'm just going to assume that you don't have a lot of money for a studio space. A lot of people make do with what they have around them. Sometimes you have a spare bedroom, sometimes you have just a corner, and that is the advantage that you can be a composer anywhere you want. You see, a studio space is nice to be able to sit down and set up and know that everything is already there where you want it. But what if you can't be there? What if you need to be on vacation or on a meeting or just want to be somewhere else? What if you're just sitting at home, you have to watch your kid or spend time with your family, just be around everyone else, but you still need to work on that track. Instead of going and secluding yourself, you can just take all of your stuff with you. Good example, my studio used to look like this. Now we moved, so my studio looks like this. And you know what? That's great, because wherever I am, I can sit there, I can watch my daughter, and compose music at the same time. It doesn't matter where I am. I can set up wherever I need to. And because of that, you learn how to mix in different surroundings. You learn how to be able to record in different situations. These are skills that you might be surprised how many times they come in handy. Whenever you have someone who's willing to do a solo instrument just somewhere in your town, you don't have a great space for it, but you know how to record their instrument well because you've learned from this experience. Advantage number two is you get to learn more about programming the samples than possibly anyone else. See, as a budget composer, you have to really think about what samples you're able to afford. It might not be as expressive as you want it to be. It might be really restricted. So you have to be creative. You have to be inventive. Think about ways that you can just use this sample in a new way. Find a way to make this sound realistic. A really good example is all of the different demos that people did on the BBC Symphony Orchestra Light Edition. That's free. It's completely free to everyone. In contrast with everything else, it's very well done. But it still sounds like sampled instruments. But when you go and listen to some of the work that people have done with it, you realize the full potential that it can have if you just spend time with it. You get to know your samples, you get to know your doll, and ultimately you become really proficient at producing and mixing and automating and all of these great things that will just 
increase your skill. Now this last one, number three, might not sound like an advantage as much as a learning opportunity. Because advantage number three is you spend more time with your tracks. Like we said, gear is used for efficiency. It's used so that you can get through each track as quickly as possible and produce as much as you can. Imagine a world where you don't have to switch between the mix window and the recording window, where you can use an expression and modulation wheel at the same time. Imagine a world where people correctly pronounce the word aunt. These are all ideal situations that we don't have because we can't afford it except for the aunt thing. But at the same time, that in itself can be an advantage because you get to spend more time with your tracks. You get to know just how every single piece is working. It's like getting to know each player of each instrument. You know exactly the nuances and exactly how every little thing is there. And you are deeply connected with each track that you get to do. I will never deny that it's difficult trying to be a composer when you don't have a lot of money, but it provides such great opportunities for growth and for learning and for this experience that a lot of people don't really get. So what do you think? What are some advantages of being a budget composer? And what have you learned while you're trying to build your brand? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more like this. You can hit that little bell to be notified whenever I make new stuff. And we got a lot more content coming soon, so see you in the next one.